Hi guys, welcome to Hope This Works. I'm Kevin, and thanks for joining me. Today I'm in the wood shop and I'm working on my radio alarm saw spline uh, fixture setup. But I need to mill up some other stock, some thick oak. And my table saw will handle it, the depth of cut will handle it. But it, oak is a, quite a hard wood, and by taking one pass with that table saw blade all the way up to uh, mill up that stock that's about three and a half inches thick. It's quite taxing on the saw itself. Uh, it's not a high powered table saw, but it's a good quality skill brand uh, table saw. So I'm going to show you another way to actually mill up that stock. A better option would be a vertical band saw, wood cutting band saw, and you can resaw that stock into thinner but wide uh, planks, whatever for, for whatever application you're going to be using that for. And I'm going to show you how I do it. Let me spin you around here. There we go. Now this is a stock that I'm going to be milling, and I need to have planks that are approximately three inches wide by about an inch thick. Now, as you can see, and my safety guard is in place and my riving knife also, the blade at its maximum height will actually cut through this piece of stock, which is about three and a half, almost four inches thick. But, like I said before, to take one pass, that blade is chewing out a lot of material. So the other option, like I said, would be to run this through on a bandsaw and resaw this. That would be a safer option. But I do not have a bandsaw. So what I want to do is I'm going to lower the blade approximately halfway, and I'm going to make a couple passes. Okay? But the problem is I have this guard assembly up on the top, and that's not actually going to allow me to take a pass that's half the thickness of this piece of stock. So my option, and I've done this, probably a lot of other woodworkers have done this too, is to remove your safety guard. I do not recommend removing your safety guard unless you are a very advanced woodworker and you know your machine very well, but I do not recommend it. Make sure your saw is unplugged very first. On this brand saw, my upper guard assembly just locks in with that tab right there and kind of spins out. Now, this is the riving knife right here, and this is designed so when you are cutting through this piece of stock, your two end cuts aren't, don't pinch back together and bind on the blade and it cause a kickback. So that's what that's designed for. But I actually need to move this riving knife so I can process this piece of lumber. Because in this fashion, I'll be sawing, and when I, once I get up to this point, my riving knife will hit the end of the stock that is actually not cut. So, on this particular model, this is what we do. Remember, the saw is unplugged. And always be cautious, even around non-spinning blades. You have carbide teeth. I've cut myself so many times changing blades or actually moving the riving knife. Now, this riving knife has three positions, and it is locked in place with a cam-type lever, which I should be able to put a picture-in-picture picture right there of that its operation. It rotates approximately 90 degrees, and then your riving knife is loose. And note these two hole positions right here, and these two hole positions right here. Those are your two other positions for your riving knife. What I recommend is never removing your riving knife completely, or lowering it down to the last position. I would just lower it down to this position. Down here, inside the saw, there's corresponding pegs that will line up on your riving knife. Again, be careful doing this, uh, nicking your fingertips, and also you don't want the riving knife touching the carbide teeth, because you could actually nick the teeth too. So then I will just move that cam into its locked position again. And now the riding knife is just below the top of the blade now. So reinstall your throat insert. Make sure it's locked completely. And now what I'm able to do is run this piece of oak through at multiple depths. And note that the riding knife will be lower than the top of the blade. So in this instance, because it is quite a hard wood, I'll make multiple passes, probably four to six passes. I'll go about three quarters of an inch deep. Run it all the way through, flip my log end to end, and then go again. Take consecutive passes until you have the top of your blade just past the halfway point. Always wear your safety glasses, and always use push sticks.
So there you have it, guys. Now I have a more manageable piece of stock that I can use to rip uh, smaller pieces so I can make these boxes. I hope this tip helped you. Uh, remember, I assume no liability for your actions operating your power equipment. This is just how I do it here, and it is a, for a very experienced woodworker, it is completely safe. Uh, again, know your machine's limitations, and take safety guards off at your own risk. So thanks for joining. I hope this works. If this is your first time to the channel, consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing for more content like this, woodworking, homesteading, gardening, mad scientist, mix or fix it, report, repurposeful, and uh, resourceful homesteading. So thanks a lot for joining me, guys. And as always, hope this works.